Guys, everything on a flat surface you do is an abstraction. We have got, again, a, a rather silly and complex notion at the moment that we have representation and you have abstraction. Right. Uh, now, I, there's something wrong in this. There's something deeply wrong in it. Yes. It must all be an abstraction. I mean, I'm sure the old Chinese would have laughed at our idea and said, well, of course it's all an abstraction. Right. Uh, so, and conversely, they also saw their most abstract designs as being expressive of a world yes, view. Yes, right? yes, yes. And um, again, the photograph is deeply involved because right. the photograph is not seen as an abstraction. For me, yes. I had to deal with it. But the, this is, this it is a problem of depiction. <laughs> I'm beginning to think everything the real world is our ima own imaginative construction i mean that's mm. what we're doing the idea that there's an objective world totally separate from us i mean i cannot accept anymore it's mm. it's a ridiculous idea it must be one of the illusions of photography you think? Yes, yes yes totally uh so all of this work with photographs is really part of what's been a sort of long quest for you of how one can more truthfully account for one's experience of the world, is it? Yes, vividly, to make it more vivid, yes. But it's much, much more complex in the sense that the subject is not the desert crossroads, I don't think. The subject is you in space, really. Yeah. Sometimes it's said of your work that it's sort of merely decorative. One often hears this criticism. But it seems to me that behind what you're now doing is an older idea of the decorative. It's an idea that the decorative is somehow deeply involved in our quest to understand and represent ultimate reality, if you like. And that there's something wrong in our culture that said the decorative is merely a sort of excrescence merely. that is added on. Well, it seems to me what is wrong is if to say the merely decorative is, first of all, it's about pleasure. It's an attack on pleasure. That, You're right. that the decorative means we like it. It is, we don't have decoration that you don't like. And uh, uh, to say that the world is decorative is saying you love it, you like the world. But it's more than just the pleasure, isn't it? I mean, it's also to do with these underlying patterns out yes, of which but, but we and it may be made. We right? are, indeed. I think, um, I think many artists of... Uh, Matisse understands that, doesn't Right. It? Yes, totally. And it all leads to ideas of wholeness, ultimately, doesn't it? That it's all one in a way, that's the idea of wholeness, which means everything is interconnected, we are not separate. Uh, but do you think, if one's talking about, for instance, the biology of the imagination, or the biology of art, or the biological basis of art, that one can see kind of that continuity between the decorative images which we take delight in, and the structures with, of which we ourselves are constructed, which have the same kind of, of decorative of form? Of course it must be, uh, of course that's the connection. In short, you're saying delight in, and we should like ourselves. If we don't like ourselves, obviously we'll take ourselves away. And the, to just to go back to the problem, the idea of uh, depiction is here we are using a camera. Remember, we're always looking at the world through a hole, um, which is, in a sense, a great problem because we're cutting ourselves off from. It's, everything is always over there. The world is over there. And that will lead us, it seems to me, to destruction, actually. What is interesting is that modern science and technology, which once seemed to be separating men and women out from the natural world, are now beginning to reveal a new sense of connectedness with it. One modern biologist has spoken of a biophilia, a deep innate urge to affiliate with other forms of life. 
he traces this back to the two million or so years which human beings spent evolving on the savannas, grasslands which were punctuated by protective patches of woodland. Now, that was an environment which wasn't so very different from the gardens with which modern human beings surround themselves uh, when they have any choice in the matter. Our desire for a new sort of imaginative understanding of nature isn't just a question of nostalgia. Rather, it involves an intuitive recognition that quite literally, we and it are made of the same stuff and in the same way. And a creative relationship to the natural world is crucial if we are to survive as a species.